us. A nip here, a tuck there. News 5 is exploring the ups and downs of cosmetic surgery. A heated debate about going under the knife. To tell kids that looks don't count is really kind of a lie because they do. Coming up, we cut to the chase when it comes to plastic surgery. Target 5 now. If you're considering some plastic surgery to take a few years off your looks, well, you have to see our next story. We asked 10 people to talk with us about the cosmetic surgery craze, why it's hot and why it's not. Liposuction, tummy tucks, facelifts. Two million Americans went under the knife last year to look better. Another eight million opted for non-surgical procedures like Botox, chemical peels, laser hair removal. Hyde Park plastic surgeon John Mendelson is not surprised by the numbers. Last year, he performed thousands of procedures. You'd be surprised at all your friends and family and, and, and people in the Midwest who do want uh, just little improvements with their eyelids, improvements with their skin little bump on their nose. It's becoming so common, more and more people are not only trying it, they're comfortable talking about it. Uh, Let's talk about yeah. Botox. As you can see, Arlene Schuler isn't shy. She's 57, okay. proud of it, and openly admits she's had a little help to look as good as she does. So when there's a new product or a new treatment, I absolutely go do it. Arlene had her nose done when she was 33. About six years ago, she started having skin treatments, chemical peels, and Botox. My skin, when I leave here, I feel like a million dollars. Four years ago, she had her upper eyelids done. To tell kids that looks don't count is really kind of a lie because they do. They just do. But how far is too far? Where does it stop? In eight years, plastic surgery increased 222 percent. Stephanie Fair says enough is enough. You can't be overweight. You can't be wrinkled. You can't be unattractive and do anything, not even sell pine salt. I mean, you really, really have to be perfect looking. Stephanie likes to look good, too. She has one thing she'd love to change about herself. I think the biggest thing would obviously be my weight. It's something I feel that I've always struggled with my entire life. And she faces the pressure society puts on being thin, pretty, and perfect every time she walks down the street or goes shopping. But unlike Arlene, Stephanie isn't willing to go under the knife to look good. I just think that people, if they really took time to evaluate their real gifts, who they really are, what they really bring to the table, they would look at it differently. Two women who both want to look good to feel better, to feel more confident, but who have two totally different views on the plastic surgery phenomenon. It's a hot topic for many people. It's a choice many of you may be debating. So we asked 10 people, five people who have had cosmetic surgery and five people who haven't and wouldn't to discuss the topic. And it didn't take long for things to get heated. I just feel like at some point we're sending messages that you have to look good, you have to look better, you're not good enough, you have to keep doing it. And I just think it's but sad. I feel some angst that you have about people looking good. And this plastic surgery craze is completely indicative of our society. I mean, it just, I mean, this pretty much sums us up. I mean, we don't like something about ourselves, well, let's change it. Think about people getting their hair colored. How many women and men now are willing to accept the natural aging process of their hair. There's a very big difference in going to the mall and getting a pedicure and walking out with no bandages, no numbness, no repercussions, than going to a doctor, sticks a needle in your face, paralyzes the muscle so that you don't have a, an expression when you smile. I think it's more affordable. I think people are doing it for purposes of increasing their self-esteem. Can you not just be happy with yourself and, and not have to have your body cut on. And my thing is with the addiction. There can be people out there that they can't stop. There's They'll get it done once or twice. There's of everything. Sure. I mean, you can take, you know, shopping we, we or say, you know, eating. I mean, there's always those extremes. I got involved with Dr. Mendelson about six years ago because I couldn't. My peripheral vision was leaving me and I couldn't operate. I couldn't work. There's did you a, stop there? No, I did not stop there. I've had everything done that he could possibly do because I feel that makes me feel better. He went from having a necessity done on his eyes for his vision and then he went on to looking better. Do you consider yourself addicted to plastic surgery? Absolutely not. Not, not at all. Alcoholics you know, don't I consider could... themselves addicted to alcohol. What does I mean, it matter to you? If it doesn't hurt you. And the reality of it is I don't get Botox for you. I get it for me. Because I don't want to see those lines in the mirror when I look at myself. I'm never going to see you again. Right. I don't care what you think about how I right. look. When you have children, 
and you know young kids and you know people that feel like they need to do that in order to be a better person or in order to you know be prettier or whatever i mean i think that's wrong and i don't care what college you go to what connections you have appearance does have something to do with it it, it just absolutely does no, now, we should mention that even after our story, Dr. John Mendelson offered each of our anti-plastic surgery people a free consultation and a procedure. None of them took him up on the offer, and so it really just goes to show that both sides were pretty true to their conviction.